So the third transformation Ra calls the construct. In your rave psychology, this is about your perception or your mind seeing. Now, perspective is the key to our reality. And I can tell you the biggest thing that shifted over time, over the 10 years of experimenting with human design, is the way that I see personally, for me especially, the way that I see life and what I think about what I see. So when we change our perspective, the reality transforms naturally. And based upon variables, each of us has a different way that we're designed to take in the world, how we're designed to see that world. So through this third transformation of the construct, we're going to begin to pay attention to the mind. Okay, it's not the sum totality of what we are. It's just the mind. It's just the software that operates on the hardware. And through this transformation, when we begin to pay attention to what is essential for us to see in order to awaken, or you could call it enlightenment, which is really a natural, normal process. It's not something, hallelujah, you know, it's not floating around on clouds or anything or turning into a rainbow body. It's a really normal state of being. So you're going to learn what distracts you away from your unique way of seeing, which leads you to nine centered enlightenment, which is being an outer authority for others. So exploring perception and the counterpoint, which we call distraction, is how you're going to learn how to observe your own mind's process. So translating individual experience through your mind and how your conditioning is supported or exposed through the viewpoint that is natural and normal for you. Now, we're not just going into the generalities. We're going into your specificity of how that perspective relates to the way that you're designed to see through your nodal view, your perceptual view, the gates and lines that are there, which is really quite fascinating part of the uh, cross of life, as Ra would call it. So exploring left and right here as well is going to help us understand whether we're designed to have a very focused perception or a peripheral perception and what that means relative to the gates and relative to the lines that are there. So the left and right mind is something that we're also going to pay attention to because left as far as its processing and right as far as its processing, thought processes, I should say, are very, very different. They're there for different things. It's not that one's good, bad, right, or wrong. It's just that they have different ways of acting and performing. And so nourishing the way that your mind's designed to function rather than thinking there's something wrong with you because you're comparing. The not self mind is always comparing self with others, trying to figure out how to get an advantage or a leg up or questioning why this doesn't work or why am I not like that? And not valuing the integrity of what's actually there, right there for you to experience. So that's one of the things that we're gonna make sure we pay attention to. And then the diamond, the, the accumulation of all of this, really, the fourth transformation is the conception of the mind. So in rave psychology, your motivation and the awareness of motivation, how it functions inside of you, the experience of motivation functioning inside of you is the awakening of the passenger consciousness or the witness consciousness that you're here to operate from because we are passengers in this vehicle, this body. And the body is what we depend on in order to have this ride through life, this exciting, sometimes joyful, sometimes sad, definitely a ride through our life. And we're still looking at the witness, the mind, not the sum totality. We're just looking at the mind. Mind is like a four or five year old child sometimes, especially if you're believing the mental thought process inside of your head about yourself and to dismantle that illusion that you just are that I voice inside of your head is the most important gift I can give you and that you can give yourself through our transformative process that we're going to go through. 
because when we're aligned to the correct path in life, the body walking its path confidently, you know, in its own right timing and in its own way, when we look out the windows, conceptualizing the framework of our view and then honoring the integrity of how we're being motivated to action, that observation and that mind process is something that is really profound to watch. So through this transformation that you may be ready to embark upon, it is about ultimately aligning your own mind with its cognitive conscious potential. Just like the brain system had its own unconscious cognitive potential, the mind has its own cognitive potential. And when all of that's lined up, we have something truly unique to offer to others, our own individuated, unique expression of consciousness in this form, what Ra would call the nine centered enlightenment or just plain old outer authority. When you get yourself out of the way of, you know, your conscious thinking mind trying to get something from life and you operate cleanly and clearly, it's like the signal, you know, of a, a telephone, a cell phone, if, if all bars are on, it's a very different experience than if you've got static on the line. So we're going to explore motivation and what is called transference when you're out of integrity something's off, which is not necessarily a bad thing because we cannot help but vacillate back and forth. There's always this counterpoint. It's just a matter of watching what happens when you are motivated correctly versus watching what happens when you are in transference, motivated incorrectly. The transference is just as valuable for you as a witness to observe. Sometimes you cannot help but operate out of either or. It's just a vacillation back and forth. But when you're watching what's happening inside of your mind and you connect up with the observation of how your mind functions, this is the awakening. The awakening to your individual process, how you process memory and turn it into thought, how you process you know, the conditioning how you're exposed to this or that. That's the deeper layers that we're going to work with underneath the fulfillment of your life's work. This is where it's coming from, is your incarnation cross, your life's work. So it's really important, profound work, and we don't want to uh, force it or push it before you're ready. Because if you're not ready and you enter into this because just because it sounds fun or it's you know, something to do or it's going to prove somebody to something to somebody, you know, it's not really something that you have the time the patience, the availability. Remember, you got to be available to come. I can't really connect with you if you haven't been watching the resources or listening to the audios that I give you, as well as come live or send me questions because I really am a wide split projector. I need to collaborate with you on this and read your energy. Even though we're over long distances, I know I can tap into the field and feel into what's correct for me to say to you during that time in your journey through this exploration of your consciousness. So to contribute your unique process of a conceptualization is the gift you give to me. It's not just a one-way street here, which is why I like these small groups, because when I hear from you how things are moving inside of you, I'm learning too, and so are the rest of us who are on this journey together. So I'm really <laughs> getting all emotional, grateful that you are paying attention at this point, and if it's correct for you to continue, I'll explain a little further.